Hello, it's Bud. This video is specifically for people who have purchased Ed Baker's rotary jig and may be interested in making a third rail uh, which is movable in order to cut dowel that is less than 14 inches long. Uh, it's uh, of cursory interest to anyone else, but it's specifically for the rotary jig made by Ed Baker. I'll be back in a minute. In the Carverite store are some third-party products. Uh, one is a GC insert by Ringnick Blues already assembled and one is Ed Baker's rotary jig you can see a view of it and what we're going to do is we're going to put a third rail from end to end on this rotary jig that's what we're going to deal with here you see a view of one of the jigs I've gotten from Ed that I've done some modification to and you see the third rail right here and you see that this piece of stock is obviously less than 14 inches uh, it has a, a knob on either end of the rail that tightens up on these pieces of three-quarter inch stock that I've attached to both ends and we're going to talk about how that was done I'll show you this picture so that you can get an idea you see the piece of three-quarter inch stock at the end of this rail there's one of those at either end so what we need to do is we need to take two small pieces of three-quarter inch stock and place them at the very end of one end of Ed's jig and then take a rule and measure to the very end the opposite side and cut a piece of long stalk to that length and make sure that it's a snug fit when you nest this on either end and the rail in the center. Uh, you want this piece to be a width of an inch and a half or more to begin with and I'll show you why. Once you've prepared the rail to the proper length and, and it snug fits and it's over it's an inch and a half or more we come into designer and we go to board settings and in designer I'm going to use a length of seven inches and I measure my board on the carving machine <laughs> excuse me to get a precise width so if my precise width was an inch point 550 that's what I'm going to put and it's three quarter inch stock see what I've got here Let's set these settings again to make sure length is seven inches And it went back to five four seven. It's three quarters an inch thick. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my drill icon. Why don't I see it? I'm blind. Here it is. And I'm going to 
put a drill, I'm using the eighth inch, I'm going to make a quarter inch hole all the way through. Um, probably can do that without doing it in uh, multiple passes. And I'm going to do a layout of center horizontal. I'm going to expand this thing so that I can get to a point that I can move it up. What I want to do is move it up so I get a measurement at the top. Now I can right click on this measurement, edit my attachment, and make it one inch because the drill is measured from the center. So just a minute. So now I can save this MPC because that's all I need. It's seven inches long. It's an inch point five five zero virtually wide. Um, but my actual board is longer than that. It's it's much more than seven inches longer. So it's going to be okay. When I put it in the machine, when I put this in the machine, uh, I can respond that I do not want to stay under rollers and I want this centered. Uh, I will not scale it. If I have to scale it, I have something wrong with the MPC. I did not use the proper width because I'm, I'm wanting to do this so that the hole is exactly one inch from what I'm considering the top of the board and I'll drill that hole. Once that hole is drilled then I can take a table saw uh, and cut off the bottom of this uh, give me at least a quarter of an inch underneath the drilled hole but I can narrow this thing down to where uh, it should clear the carrier board that moves my dowel. Okay. Once I've done that, I can cut some of this three-quarter inch extra stock that I have so that it is the same width top to bottom is what my rail is and if I put a piece on either side of the rail I can cut this thing so it is the same width as those three thicknesses. I, I want two of these pieces and this is just a regular T-nut quarter 20 thread. I used a Forstner bit to inset the T-nut head so that it does not interfere with putting firmly up against the rail. Once I have that done, then I can assemble both ends. This is the top and these pieces can be as deep as what the rail is deep, but I've, I've uh, glued and pinned these things with brads uh, on both of these side pieces and into the side pieces from this end piece with the um, T-nut on it. Here's another view. Here's the top of the jig and you can see that assembly that I've done there. The quarter 20 key nuts you can get at any hardware store. Um, I had a problem finding the key nut or the uh, knobs that I wanted in that the threaded portion is part of the knob uh, as an extension. Uh, I wanted that so that I could insert it um, in the proper slot 
after I put the uh, third rail in place on the jig. Uh, I ended up finding the proper knob at Granger's and believe me I went to hardware stores, I went to uh, specialty places with knobs. Uh, I could get a knob that had a threaded hole but not with the prod that I wanted. Um, it's a uh, three-prong knob. Uh, one and one eighth by a quarter twenty by one and one half. That is the length of the threaded extension. And the part number for Granger's is six AX G six. And hopefully there's a Granger store near you if you've never been to one. Uh, it seems like a fabulous place to go. I'll remember it for a long time. Okay, so what we do is we turn edge jig upside down and place the assembled rail upside down uh, in the jig. I've taken two pieces of three-quarter inch stock and I will take the the B portion first and place it so that with a just a regular bolt in the quarter 20 hole on both ends uh, and possibly another piece of stock that is drilled exactly the same way um, somewhere else along the track so that I can get this thing so it's um, parallel to the top of the jig. Uh, I want to bring that piece of bee stalk up so it touches the bolt without moving the rail. That way it will be tight against the top when I do that. Once I've got that done on both ends then I can turn the jig over or leave it the way it is and take another thinner piece of three-quarter inch stock and butt it up against uh, the other portion of the bolt so that, that slot is the same all the way across and that's my A piece and this A piece has to be narrow enough that the carrier board passes underneath it with no problem. And then what you see is now that I've got the knobs in place on both ends, that inch and a half threaded extension of the knob is just right to put enough pressure on the movable rail to keep it in place. The reason that I designed it this way with this thing being a couple of inches wide is that when you press up when you when you put the rail in place and press it up against the top of edge jig uh, it will be perpendicular your rail will be perpendicular to the workpiece and that's what you want. It's not rocket science but it works. Here's your T-nut. There it is assembled so that you can see what's going on. There's your final portion of the assembly and there is the entire jig with the stock in place. And for those of you that are also scanning with this jig, this allows for you not to have to build a 14 inch piece with everything you scan. 
you can shorten up how you do your scans. Uh, I have another secret if you're interested um, on how you can do larger dowel um, and how to shim it, uh, but I'll need a private message uh, to explain that. I'm not going to explain that at this point. But in a nutshell, that's how we can make a third rail for Ed Baker's rotary jig. Yes, I could make them and sell them, um, but the shipping cost would be more than the cost of material. Uh, I presume that you're going to spend less than $10 on the knobs and the G-nuts and the wood, probably much less if you have scrap wood laying around. And the movable rail uh, really works. And I thank you for your time.